For emergency crews like this one, responding to heart problems is a matter of life and death. We've just been called out to a report of a cardiac arrest at a convalescent hospital. Since the COVID-19 pandemic began, LA County paramedics say they've been busier than ever with calls like this one, transporting a cardiac arrest patient. County health officials have tracked notable increases in cardiac arrests and heart attacks since the pandemic began, and experts say it's part of a broader trend. A national study from Cedar sinai Hospital shows that deaths related to heart attacks increased across every age group since the spring of 2020. But the group that saw the biggest increase isn't who you might think. Young people are obviously not really supposed to die of heart attack. But the relative increase in heart attack associated deaths among 25 to 44 year olds was a staggering 30 percent more than the increase in middle and older age groups, which ranged between 15 and 20 percent. Paramedic Romeo Robles noticed an uptick with each COVID surge in the South L.A. community he serves. Yeah, surprisingly, like people my age where we would find them in cardiac arrest. So why the spike in heart problems along with each pandemic wave? Dr. Susan Chang, a co-author of the Cedar sinai study, is concerned about the COVID connection. There are a lot of things that COVID can do to the cardiovascular system. It uh, appears to be able to increase the likelihood of blood clot formation. It seems to stir up inflammation in the blood vessels. It seems to also cause, in some people, an overwhelming stress that can also cause a spike in blood pressure. Experts are still working to figure out why young people are so impacted. But Dr. Chang says it may be related to higher viral load exposure or an excess immune response in stronger immune systems. Studies show COVID-19 is also linked to a rare condition called myocarditis, the inflammation of the heart muscle itself. It can strike even young, healthy students like Demi Washington now a senior on the women's basketball team at Vanderbilt University. I just immediately started crying. After Washington came down with what felt like a mild case of COVID in late 2020, an MRI revealed unseen damage and stopped her from playing. And the fact that I could have played is kind of, you know, hard and scary to think about. She's now recovered and back to focusing on her rebounds. Washington's health scare came before she got vaccinated. Still, some have pointed to rare instances of the vaccine causing myocarditis. Health experts say the virus itself is much more dangerous to your heart. The risk of heart injury of myocarditis or pericarditis from the vaccine is so much lower than the risk from the COVID itself. Researchers only beginning to chart the long-term impacts the pandemic has on the heart, while paramedics continue racing to treat the damage. It's not just the elderly that are being affected, it's also people like ourselves who were previously healthy. Doctors like Susan Chang say they hope to make new strides toward understanding what exactly the link is between COVID and heart disease, and they're optimistic they'll learn more with time. They're starting to think that a COVID infection or reinfections could be considered a risk factor for heart disease in and of itself, though she says they have more work to do before knowing for sure. All right. Guys. Aaron McLaughlin. Aaron, uh, thank you. Joining us with more is NBC senior medical correspondent Dr. John Torres. I think we should start off with something that a lot of people think and I think needs to be cleared up. There are a lot of people who believe it is the COVID vaccine that causes heart issues, not COVID itself. Can you just clear in that COVID up? COVID itself, there's such a higher risk of getting a heart issue from COVID, especially myocarditis. And when you look at the statistics, myocarditis, you're 11 times more likely to get it from COVID itself than you are from the vaccine. When it comes to heart attacks, there's been no direct connection between the vaccine and heart attacks or cardiac arrest. There have been some reports, but those reports were usually somebody who had a heart attack the day after getting the vaccine, which means the vaccine really hadn't even had the time to thing. do anything in their body. It's so interesting to see that COVID clearly has an impact mm -hmm. on heart health. And that's regardless of age, but more pronounced in this younger group. Can you just explain that? So we do know that in, uh, in the elderly, those that are older, you have more heart attacks overall, but the rate is increasing higher in this younger age group, which is a surprising factor. And years ago, when the pandemic first started years mm -hmm. ago, you know, three years ago, we thought of it as a respiratory virus. Then we started thinking of it, oh, it could also be a vascular vi virus because mm -hmm. we know it affects the blood vessel linings themselves. We talked about the inflammation, the stress that goes behind this. It's not a cold. 
it is a bad virus. Well, interesting in Aaron's piece, there was that young athlete who said she had mild COVID symptoms. It wasn't even like she had devastating COVID symptoms. Does it matter if you have long COVID versus mild symptoms? And that's one of the other things. It doesn't seem to matter at all because what we do think is happening is part of it's your immune response, which can keep COVID under control. But at the same time, it could just be overwhelming the system and causing these heart type issues. The other thing is we don't know how long you're at risk for this. And like she mentioned in her piece there, it could be something that 10, 20, 30 years from now, we're saying, do you smoke? Do you have high cholesterol? Did you have COVID? Oh. Those are your risk factors for a heart attack. That's what I'm wondering about because it's, it's not like you have COVID, you recover, and the next day these heart events happen. Mm -hmm. There can be the passage of time. There can be the passage of time. And with long COVID being a bigger and bigger issue, we don't know. And the more you have COVID, it seems it puts you at a higher risk, especially in those young adult ages at getting something like this. And so you want to make sure, even if you're vaccinated, you still protect yourself from getting COVID, which means, you know, the things we know that can help. And us. is there anything you can do? I mean, if you if you've had COVID and you're young and you're or you're curious, is there anything you can do? So number one, know your risk factors. Keep yeah. an eye on yourself, especially if you have a family history of heart disease or heart attacks. You know, keep an eye on yourself. If you notice any of the symptoms we talk about, you know, the chest pain, the shortness of breath, the arm pain, any of those things, then go ahead and get checked out. On top of that, make sure you're vaccinated and you're boosted because that can protect you the most. We have protection right now from if you do get COVID of keeping it at mild cases and under control mm -hmm. and then mask up. We know we don't like masks. It's been three years of this, but at the same time, it's still out there and it's still causing some problems throughout the day. We still have a lot to learn yeah, we three sure years do. into this. All right, Dr. John, thank you very thank much. You. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.